The world's always changing, and sometimes characters are too. Hey folks, it's time for my uh, monthly-ish um, addressing of LGBTQ issues in various pop culture media that uh, I partake in. So that does mean we are going to be swapping out, uh, which, I, which I tend to do for these because I think otherwise people tend to assume that uh, I'm not uh, an actual part of the LGBT commu uh, LGBTQ community. Um, when in fact I am. So, reminder, um, I have a fluid sense of gender. Uh, we can go with queer, it seems to be the easiest. Um, and yes, I, I do have uh, more than just the, uh, the cat eye frames. So, let's talk about retconning sexuality. Because this is something that I saw come up a fair bit. Um, in regards to other times that I've talked about this, especially with, say, uh, when I did uh, kind of the, what ended up by default being the first video in kind of the series, which was my queer baiting video. And uh, my a video about queer baiting, not a video where I was queer, but anyways. Um, you know, I, I talked about in that video the whole issue of creators, writers, directors, studios, whatever, um, sort of pushing that a character is in, you know, some version of LGBTQ and then not delivering those goods um, definitively in the in the work itself and my issues with that. And something that ca came up repeatedly in the comments, sometimes um, directly linked to my, um, my mentioning the character of Iceman, who I am going to talk about in specifics, we'll get there, um, but also in general are people saying, basically expressing the sentiment I have no issue with LGBTQ inclusion um, and representation in my media. What I don't understand is why characters have to be changed to be LGBTQ. It's disrespectful to the characters and it doesn't make sense. Or, you know, some version of that uh, was something I, I saw a fair amount of. And I, <laughs> this is often the impetus for me to make these videos, um, which is that I found myself having to basically, because um, because a lot of these things were said respectfully. I'm I'm actually I've been really happy with the with the comment responses for the most part to these videos. So these were said respectfully, and when I see a respectful inquiry like that, I like to reply. Um, and I found myself kept replying the same way over and over and over again. And when I do find myself doing that, eventually you go, I just need to make a video so I, I don't have to keep writing this out. So the argument, like I, like I kind of summed up, is look, you want LGBTQ characters? Fine. Why are you co-opting existing characters to be that representation? Why aren't you introducing new characters? And there is a certain amount of validity to that, especially in regards to the fact that there is, there is often a hesitance or a reluctance or a fear to introduce new characters who are LGBTQ. I don't know if it's of a fear of rejection. I don't know if it's tied to the fact that a lot of times certain franchises really seem to resist introducing new characters if they can help it in the first place, especially long-running things like comic book continuity. They just want to keep going back to the same characters over and over and over and over again. So, you know, it that that could happen more. Absolutely. But I, I actually think there is a validity to having a character not previously identified as LGBTQ be revealed to be that. Now, before I get into explaining why I think that actually can be a valid choice, let me front load this by saying it can absolutely go wrong. It can go horrible. It can result in something cringy, inauthentic, that absolutely makes no sense. But I kind of just want to address the base sort of argument that you can't do that. I think you can. I think there's a valid reason to. So... I mentioned Bobby Drake, who I, I did bring up in that queer, ba queer baiting video from a few months back. And I brought him up as an example of a character where I thought um, that was a solid choice. Um, and that, that seemed to be an issue I got a lot of pushback on from people who otherwise agreed with most of what I said. Now, um, I do have to admit to only having read bits and pieces of his outing and what's gone on since, 
I haven't been reading it exhaustively. If it has gone off the rails or if it did for time and got better, I seem to get, I got conflicting reports for people. I have to own up to not knowing front to back, having followed absolutely everything uh, that's gone on since, uh, since he was outed. So that's my mea culpa there. But I still will defend that he was a solid candidate to do this with. And to explain why, I need to explain why I say it, it can be a valid thing. Because it is a reality for many LGBTQ people that we live a portion of our lives, sometimes a very significant portion of our lives, not allowing other people to know that we are whatever we are, be it gay, lesbian, transgender, asexual, gender fluid, gender queer, whatever it might be. Um, you know, just to to lay out a, a general timeline for myself, the first person who knew um, that I was anything other than cisgender was I was I was 20. That was in college, and um, my close family wouldn't find out for probably another about five years. From there, my close friends wouldn't start finding out until another five or six years from that. I wouldn't be out publicly until this year. And that is, I, 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 don't, I don't think I've ever really even been severely closeted, but for me, it was a case of not sort of making it um, overly public until I had a really good handle on it because I knew there were going to be a ton of questions and I only had so many answers. So, and there are many reasons that um, LGBTQ people don't come out. And sometimes it is fear. Sometimes it's fear of rejection. Sometimes it's honestly a period of denial, even of themselves. Some, some, peop some of us take a long time to figure ourselves out, much less even after we do that, being comfortable allowing the world to know. And you know, you can go all you want about like everyone should be tr proud of who they are. Yes, they should be, but sometimes what you are and figuring out is damn confusing and it takes a while. So the reality of presenting as cisgender heteronormative is the truth of a, of I would say at this point still the significant majority of LGBTQ people, at least for um, a decent portion of, the, of our lives. So I think there is a validity in taking a character who previously had been portrayed as cisgender or heterosexual and then revealing actually they're gay, they're, there's something else going on with their gender identity, there's whatever. Um, I'll stick to saying gay because that's kind of the only way it, it's happening, uh, at least so far, so far as I can tell. Um, so there is actually a reason, true to life, to why. And before you go like, well, are, are you saying that gay people like date the opposite sex before they come out as gay? Yeah, sometimes. Sometimes they do. Sometimes they do it as cover. Sometimes they do it because they want to be normal and they're honestly trying to make it work. And the reason I think that Bobby Drake specifically was a good candidate for this kind of change, um, and this is regardless of how well you do or don't think it what the, the reveal itself was handled or the aftermath, regardless of any of that, I think he was still a solid candidate. And here's why. He is a character for whom his he was depicted as heterosexual, but his heterosexual relationships had never been a primary defining feature of his character or of his stories. To to explain that further, I'll go for a point of comparison. Quick, who are the, who are the defining love interests of Batman, Superman, Spider Man, and immediately you can think Talia Al Ghul or Catwoman, Lois Lane. Mary Jane, Gwen Stacy, um, you know, you'd think Cyclops, you immediately think Jean Grey. Those, you know, those are characters where a heterosexual romantic and or sexual relationship is actually a huge part of their character. Who's the significant love interest of Iceman? 
And I'm not saying there, there weren't any, but you have to at least grant that only really big fans of this character would have been able to answer that question. And his romantic history had been a very minor feature of his character. He had, it had never been front and center, again, to make a comparison within the X-Men, unlike, you know, Kitty Pride and Colossus, or Scott and Jean, or Scott and, uh, <laughs> and, uh, and the White Queen, or, uh, you know, whatever else is going on. This is some of those, some of those times, Scott and Madeline Pryor, or, Scott is kind of a mess. Um, but Bobby, you know, he had some crushes that didn't go anywhere. He had some relationships that were short-lived. And that was sort of the thing. His relationships with women were short, not, didn't seem to be massively important to him, and didn't end well. So that kind of relationship pattern bears more than a passing resemblance to the relationship pattern of someone who isn't straight but is trying to be for whatever reason. Um, and again, you know, I'm sure some people will argue the logic, well, he's out as a mutant. Why wouldn't he also be out as being gay? It's like, the, look, first of all, it's a fictional, it's a fictional universe. So, you know, it's hard to, to say how easy or hard it is to, to be out as a mutant. But beyond that, you know, the, the two don't equate because he's surrounded by other mutants. He's not surrounded by other LGBTQ people. So I don't think it's um, it's that big of a leap to think that he is cautious or uncomfortable about that when he's totally comfortable with something else that maybe society as a whole is judging him for, but his friends aren't. And I do think that that if someone is going to be revealed to be LGBTQ, that is a pre-existing character, that a character like Bobby is a good candidate. And again, I think there is a validity to that. Now, again, I'll say this, and I said it before, this can absolutely go wrong. And generally, if it does, the way that it goes wrong is if they fundamentally alter the way that they're writing the character. So if, if because being, <laughs> being gay or being transgender or being whatever doesn't, shit doesn't change who you are as a person. So if, if a character is revealed to be gay um, and then suddenly is treating everybody around them massively differently than they used to before and suddenly their characterization is so off from what it used to be, you might as well have just introduced a new character. Yeah, that's doing it wrong. But say someone like Rosa Diaz on Brooklyn Nine-Nine Five seasons in, five seasons of television. I believe over a hundred episodes at that point. Revealed to be bisexual. And it works spot on because the way in which it is revealed is completely in keeping with who Rosa is as a character and the way she treats this situation and the people around her in telling them is completely true to that character. And it works. And it can work. And it tracks with her. It, you look at everything that's gone on with her and you look at the scene where she comes out, which I encourage you to, to look up on YouTube. It, it, it is up. It's not like a pirated scene. Like it's up as an official clip released. So check that out. It's real simple, straightforward, and again, absolutely true to the character. So it can be done badly, it can be done well, but I do reject the premise of there's no reason to take a straight cisgender character and make them LGBTQ. I think if you're going to do that, you need to choose who you're gonna do it with carefully and you need to handle it carefully, but I think that can be done in a way that speaks to, as I said, the truth of many LGBTQ experiences, which is a period of time where people don't know. And uh, I think another one that's, uh, that's a good example is Willow in Buffy, because um, 
it was considered, at least so far as, as I've been able to find, it was considered fairly early on that either Xander or Willow would eventually be revealed to be gay, but early into the show, they didn't know which one of them it would be. So it was not dead certain that Willow was going to end up being gay. That was a decision made later, so that counts as a retcon. That counts as changing it part way through, but it still works and it still flows because the relationship that she had with Xander was the kind of awkward first crush, like, well, this is a person I really like. Doesn't that make me attracted to them? But then you actually find someone who you are attracted to, turns out they're the same sex and you go, oh, this makes sense now. That's why things were weird before. And it, it flows and it's a narrative that makes sense. It is possible to have a character previously portrayed only as straight be revealed to be something other than that and have it make sense. It's really easy to screw up though. <laughs> but yeah, I just wanted to to address the people who, who and, and I don't think saying this hatefully, but I'm just hoping to bring another perspective um, to anyone who just kind of rejected the, would reject the notion. But like I said, there are plenty of characters you shouldn't do this with. Anyone who, you know, Having having major uh, heterosexual relationships has been a defining feature of the character. Probably a bad idea. And that's not me even saying that that sort of thing never happens in reality, because honestly, that does still happen in reality. There are people who are married for years and honestly even love their spouses, but are still gay <laughs> and are married to someone of the opposite sex. And so that kind of stuff does still happen, but that that is a, that's a kind of narrative, honestly, if you're gonna try and tackle that, that's something you shouldn't do as a retcon. That is something you should be planning for as part of the long game, because um, as difficult as it is to, to tackle people who are in a denial for a period, tackling the story of someone who is in denial while being in a straight relationship for a long, long time, that is a heavy topic and not something to ever be taken lightly. So that that's the sort of thing that I'm not saying shouldn't be done like, like it's on principle, never do it, but like that is so heavy and you're gonna engender so much animosity from people that I, I would recommend against it. But again, to make the connection to reality, yeah, that does happen too. I do think it's too, that might be too much to ask of uh, of an audience, at least at this point in time. Who knows? Things are changing, times are changing, and people change, which is how I started. And that, to me, says that that's a good place to end. So what are your thoughts on the idea of retconning sexual orientation or gender identity? Uh, the latter of which I don't know too many examples of. Um, I imagine there's probably some in anime. I, th I think there were some references to that in the last comments. I enjoy anime, but I don't know it well enough, especially the TV shows, to really be able to dig into that area of fandom. But um, in any case, whatever your thoughts on this are, as always, I ask that you be respectful. Even if you disagree with me, by all means, disagree with me. I actually, some of my favorite conversation threads have been with people who disagree with me, but who do so respectfully without calling me names or uh, using pejorative terms. So if you can keep it um, nice and polite, whatever your thoughts are, drop something down in the comments. Let's talk about it. There's all the stuff to do, such as like and subscribe and support me on Patreon, maybe. Um, and follow me on Twitter. I've got an email address and sell t-shirts and all that stuff. Links for all that stuff is down in the description. So until next time, this council is adjourned. Thank you.